perfectly intact ghost ship missing for years has experts stunned. Alone in the middle of shifting waves, the Mary Celeste floated. It was 400 miles east of the Azores Islands when Captain David Morehouse and his crew came across the deserted vessel. The ship had departed from New York City eight days prior, but was found abandoned by December 5, 1872. The Mary Celeste was on its way to Genoa, Italy. When the captain and the team boarded the ship, they were walking into a mystery a mystery that would only grow as the years passed. Authorities found belongings torn and strewn across the cabins as well as some inexplicable developments around the vessel's equipment. What could have happened? Ten people don't just disappear. That was exactly what sailors aboard the salvage ship told themselves when they came across the empty Mary Celeste at sea. They brought her back to dry land for an official investigation, which only raised more questions than answers. On November 7, 1872, the Mary Celeste set sail from New York with seven crew members, Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs, his wife Sarah, and their infant daughter Sophia. The ship traveled to the Azores Island, which was recorded in its log. The mystery may not have endured so long in maritime history if it hadn't been for Arthur Conan Doyle. The Sherlock Holmes creator published J. Habakkuk Jepson's statement, his imaginative retelling of the incident. Doyle's highly sensationalized version concerned a supposed survivor of the ghost ship, which was caused by a mutiny. Other popular folk explanations include pirates and supernatural forces. These stories spread like wildfire but also clouded public perception of the incident. On the other hand, documentarian Anne McGregor swore to discover what really happened to the ship. There's so much nonsense written about this legend, I felt compelled to find the truth, Anne said. Anne had already made four other investigative documentaries, so she knew what she was up against. There are obvious limitations for historic cases, but using the latest technology, you can come to a different conclusion, she said. Anne started with ruling out what didn't make sense. The ship was fully intact and had cargo in its hold, so pirates were out. Another theory was that drunk crew members turned on the captain. After interviewing their descendants, this seemed rather implausible. Because the ship was intact and even seaworthy, this made it even stranger. It wasn't flooded or horribly damaged. Phil Richardson, an oceanographer at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution said, the Discovery crew sailed it, so it was in really good shape. With the more violent theories knocked out, Anne delved into reasons why the passengers and crew would abandon a perfectly good ship. First, she wanted to find the exact spot where the ship was left alone. According to the ship's log, they were six miles from Santa Maria, one of the Azores, on November 25th. But ten days later, the other crew found the vessel 400 miles east instead. It was time to track the ship's potential path. Anne obtained water temperatures, wind speeds, and wind directions from the International Comprehensive Ocean Atmosphere Dataset, ICOADS, stores information from 1784 to 2007 to study climate change. Using this information, she concluded that the ship could have easily sailed to where it was discovered without a crew to guide it. Still, why was it abandoned? They were getting closer. The most likely situation for a captain to issue an abandoned ship order is if they spotted land. Because the closest island to Santa Maria was hundreds of miles away, it would be likely that the ship was left early on November 25th, after the log entry was written. Using notes from the Attorney General Frederick Solly Flood, who oversaw the investigation, we can get a bit more information. According to this source, the captain miscalculated their position due to a faulty chronometer he was actually 120 miles west. On November 24th, the Mary Celeste changed course and sailed to the north of the Santa Maria. They faced rough seas and high winds. These factors wouldn't be enough to warrant an order to jump ship, though. Before this trip, the Mary Celeste charted coal across the ocean. The ship itself received a plethora of upgrades to make it the ultimate coal carrier. Within the pumps, coal dust and other debris were found. This could be the reason why authorities found one of the pumps on the ship completely dissembled. These devices were responsible for getting rid of the seawater that accumulated in the Mary Celeste. Without a working pump, 
Captain Benjamin would have no idea if ship's hull was full of water. He would have needed to rely on visual clues, which were almost never as accurate as machinery. At this point, the Mary Celeste faced terrible weather, an inaccurate location, and a poorly functioning ship. All of these factors may have overwhelmed the poor captain, leading him to issue the order. Though Anne's theory is backed by extensive research, it is still just a theory. No one really knows what happened to the ten souls aboard the Mary Celeste, but modern historians can't give up on a great mystery. Anne is now writing a book with even more information about the Mary Celeste. The research goes on, she says, because I've been touched by the story, as I hope other people will be. Anne's also looking to other nautical mysteries for clues. Thank <laughs> you.